What is going on everyone? My name is Colin. Welcome to the Pokey Office. We're back at it again looking at booster boxes and their market values. They have been going absolutely insane for the last like I don't even know how long ever since I've been following the Pokemon market. Sword and Shield has come to an end so we don't know if reprints are coming or if they're all done uh, and these booster boxes continue to climb meteoric rises and let's just take a look at the data and get into what I think are still really good investments. Okay, it's been a little while since I've done one of these, but booster boxes from Sword and Shield are still going absolutely insane, which is amazing because I'm a big believer in booster boxes. I love the investing in sealed products, not so much to make a ton of money, but just I think it's a really cool collection to have. So I have one of each of these, plus moving forward into Scarlet and Violet, I'm also gonna be having those as well. Okay, so back all the way to Sword and Shield base set. The last three months has been kind to this one. Started at $255.82 at the uh, middle of January. Now it's up to $288.31. That's up 12.7%, which is just crazy. Uh, not a ton to pull in Sword and Shield. If you watched my previous video earlier this week where I was opening every set of Sword and Shield, era Pokemon cards, um, just not a ton to see in Sword and Shield base set. I'd say the same about Rebel Clash. There's not a ton going on in terms of the actual cards that you can pull. So really you're only paying for this booster box because it's a little bit harder to find and it's a little bit older. This one's actually down, but really it's barely down anything. Uh, started at $214.59. Now it's down to $212.48. I think that's just typical market. Some sell for a little bit less, some sell for a little bit more. So not really anything to be concerned about there. It's pretty firmly cemented this booster box at like that $210 to $215 range. Moving on to Darkness Ablaze. Another one where there's not a ton of cards, there's that Charizard VMAX, but that one's worth about $30 to $35. And other than that, there's not a lot of high value cards to pull in Darkness Ablaze, but this one is on a nice upward trend over the last three months. Started at $140.78. Now it's up to $152.99, which is 8.7%. Moving on to Vivid Voltage. This one's still available on Pokemon Center for $143.64. Um, so a little bit more than market price, but uh, depends if you can find it or not. This one is up 11.7% Vivid Voltage from $125.65. That was the middle of January all the way to $140.37 market price, which is a nice gain over three months. Battle Styles, another really good one. For a long time, you could buy this one really cheap. Now it's just been on a really nice upward trend. Uh, because it's a little bit older, a little bit harder to find, and still really, really nice. This one's also available on Pokemon Center, but uh, the market value is still less than MSRP on Pokemon Center. So this one is currently sitting at $115.09, up 11.9% over the last three months from $102.87. Okay, we're getting into some good ones here. I love Chilling Rain. This one was on a nice trend up for a long time. It's currently flattened out and leveled off a bit, but still up 7.2% uh, from middle of January from $131.16 all the way to $140.63. This one also available. All the next ones, I think, are available, except for Evolving Skies, of course. Uh, they're all available on PokemonCenter.com if you are looking for a booster box at that like MSRP price. Of course, Evolving Skies is not because it's going absolutely ridiculously crazy bonkers. Uh, when will it ever stop? I don't know if it will. I really legitimately think that this booster box could be worth $1,000 in like two years. I think it's one of those ones that is just going to continue to climb. People love it so much. Anyways, over the last three months, had a couple valleys and one little spike, and then it's just skyrocketed over like the last two months. Um, so it started at $322.40. Now it's at $393.14, which is a 21.9% increase. Absolutely nuts. Moving on, Fusion Strike. This one, we're getting into these uh, bit newer sets, and all of the values are starting to rise a little bit. Uh, minus one that you'll find out soon. Fusion Strike started at $122.83. And now is at $137.92, up 12.3% over the last three months. 
Brilliant Stars is the one that is down because I don't know why it was so high in the first place. You could buy this uh, booster box all over the place, especially on Pokemon Center for MSRP of 143.64, and it was the market price had it at like 180 dollars, so it just made no sense. Uh, this was a little bit expected in my opinion, just because these are still available, um, <clears throat> and the market price was just too high on it, to be quite frank. So this one's down 14.5%, sitting now at $154.78, which is still above the MSRP uh, that you can get it at Pokemon Center. So still don't quite get it. I think it'll come down a little bit more uh, while they're still available. Now we're on to Astral Radiance. This one had a really nice climb at the end of January, early February, um, up 9.5% over the last three months. And the market price now is $125.72. Started January, it was $114.77. Lost Origin, this one is going big. I think people just love that Giratina and the Aerodactyl. I sure do, and I haven't pulled it yet. So hopefully one of these days I'll have the opportunity to but my, uh, my stock of Lost Origin is getting scarce for sure. So anyways, this one is up 17.2% from $126.43 to $148.23. Another one that's still available on Pokemon Center for MSRP, $143.64. So check it out. <clears throat> Last up of the Sword and Shield era, Silver Tempest, another one that has had a nice upward trend. Um, up 9.9% over the last three months from $124.47 to $136.82. Um, these are getting harder and harder to find. I hope that some reprints come uh, for, for us so that we can get booster boxes at a good deal. But I don't know. I just... People are skeptical online, and as we move further and further into Scarlet and Violet, plus Crown Zenith is still in its release window, plus Paldea Evolved is already announced and ready to come out in June, so I have no idea if we're ever seeing more reprints of these booster boxes or if they're a thing of the past. Either way, I think now is uh, probably a pretty good time to be adding these booster boxes to your collection if you're looking to do so. And last, of course... Uh, we have the new Scarlet and Violet base set. I didn't include a graph because there's no point. It's brand new, uh, just like a week, a uh, week and a half or two weeks old. And now this one is sitting at $122.88 just for uh, your purposes. If you haven't known, the MSRP on these new booster boxes on Pokemon Center, these ones are going for $161.64. Whereas the old Sword and Shield ones, $143.64. So it is an $18 price increase on these booster boxes. So uh, with that being said, let me know what you think. Are you still adding booster boxes to your collection? Uh, and I'll see you on the flip side to open some of these new Scarlet and Violet packs. Okay, so yeah, like I said, let me know what you think. Are you adding booster boxes to your collection still? Uh, like I said, and I think I showed you in a video, it's quite a while back in my uh, my video history, but I have a booster box of every set of Sword and Shield, and now I have a Scarlet and Violet booster box as well. So I want to start working on the Sun and Moon booster boxes, but those are getting really pricey. Um, I love booster boxes. I think they're awesome collection pieces, plus I think they're a really good investment. As you can see, like these are gaining a lot. So uh, without further ado, leave me a comment, hit the like button, uh, help me get out to more people on the YouTube stuff. The algorithm really likes that. And I'm getting ever closer to a thousand subscribers. I appreciate you all for watching so much. I'm having such a good time doing this. And once I hit a thousand, my the video after I hit a thousand, I'm gonna give away one of these elite trainer boxes of Evolving Skies. So super pumped about that. Uh, hit the subscribe button with bell notifications on. I'm coming at you with Pokemon content Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Let's rip into some Scarlet and Violet packs. I got 10 packs for you and see if we can pull some awesome cards. Okay, Scarlet and Violet. Um, I would expect that these booster boxes for the, um, the new set, Scarlet and Violet, will be a decent price for a while. Um, I mean, they're, it's not like they're gonna go crazy. They're just started printing them, so. 
Yeah, hey, nothing on the first pack, but I do love that you get a bunch of reverse hollows. I think that's really cool. Plus, I give lots of cards away to kids, and I also sell them on some marketplaces. So the fact that um, like more shiny things is cool, especially like even my nieces, they don't know the difference between a $1 card and a $100 card. They just like shiny, cool looking cards. So the fact that these packs have extra shinies in them, I think it's really cool. Dondozo, that is an illustration rare, looking pretty slick, I like that a lot. And Toxicroak EX, okay. There's a nice double banger pack to get us started on pack number two. I like that. I really like that. What are you guys thinking about Scarlet and Violet so far? Um, I've Honestly, I haven't watched a ton of content. I've been really busy lately, but the content I have watched seemingly says that Scarlet and Violet pull rates are good right out of the gate which is a nice change because I don't think they were very good for uh, Sword and Shield out of the gate. They got a lot better with like Brilliant Stars when they brought the Trainer Gallery into play. There's a Magic card, Crushing Hammer, and a Houndstone. Um, so I've been uh, pretty impressed with Scarlet and Violet pull rates so far. I think it's really good for, for the uh, hobby, having good pull rates because if people get salty about not pulling something, I think that's going to detract them from buying packs. Whereas if they can have a really good time opening packs, then they're going to keep doing so. Plus, they're still going to go up in value as an investor over time. Plus, you can have people playing the actual card game, the TCG, and not spending an arm and a leg trying to build a deck. We just pulled a Houndstone twice in a row, so that's uh, epically bad. Have you also noticed if you've opened any of these that the like actual wrap on these packs is feels different than Sword and Shield ones does? It feels like heavier. I don't know what kind of material it is. It must be some sort of plastic or something, but I don't know. Old school. Coquavo. And there's the energy. Shocker. I forgot to pull it at the start. Um, what else can I tell you? Evolving Skies. I got to do another video on it soon because, like, legitimately, I bought that thing in November. I bought an Evolving Skies booster box, and I paid, like, 200 for it. So it's almost doubled in price since November. Are, like, are you serious? That is absolutely bonkers. Uh, we're kind of ice cold here, too. We had the one good pack. Hopefully we turn things around. I was just talking about good pull rates, but is Evolving Skies not completely bonkers? And the Moonbrion, I was just looking at the data the other day before recording this, and it's like, it doesn't stop growing. It doesn't stop. Like, man, I wish I could pull one. Bombardier. That's a cool looking card. I like that. And Magnezone EX, another, another double banger pack. Okay, I already pulled the Magnezone in a previous video, but this uh, Bombardier, Bombardier, depends if you uh, pronounce it with an accent or not, um, looking pretty slick. This Magnezone actually looks pretty cool too. Uh, not worth a ton, but still a nice, nice pull. I like it when you can get two cards out of a single pack. It makes it a lot of fun. Come on, baby. We need something here. Something awesome. Like, maybe one of those special illustration rares. That'd be fun. Chansey. And a Maridon. We've had a couple uh, duplicate hits. Like, I pulled that Maridon twice already, I think. Uh, that Houndstone. So, two packs left. Uh, we've only had two good packs out of eight so far, I guess. So we're hitting at a 25% rate, but both of them have been a double banger pack. So hard to know what to think about that. Pokeball and an Arcanine EX. There's another hit. Okay, maybe we're heating up. If you're still here watching, hit that like button for me. 
on this last pack. Can we hit some last pack magic? I've done it before. <laughs> Honestly, it always reminds me, whenever I say that, one of my like very first videos, I was opening Chilling Rain. I asked for last pack magic and boy did it deliver with the gold Snorlax from Chilling Rain. That was the start of something special because once you pull last pack magic once, you're just searching for it again. Three, two, one. Iron Treads EX, okay. Hello, that is a sick hit right there to finish it off. Come on, baby. Um, that's a really nice finish. So, very nice. Let's take a look at what we hit here. Starting off with our last hit of the day, Iron Treads EX, the full art version of it. I think it's called a special illustration rare. I'm hoping anyways, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We got the Arcanine EX regular. We got a uh, Bombardier uh, illustration rare. We got a Magnezone EX and we got a Toxic Rogue EX and we got a Dondozo illustration rare. So overall, not too bad. We started off kind of ice cold with not very many hits in the first eight packs, but the last two packs delivered big, especially with that last pack magic, Iron Treads EX. Uh, my name is Colin, this is the Poke Office. Thank you for stopping by, appreciate you so much. Make sure to hit the like button on your way out and subscribe with bell notifications on because I'm coming at you with Pokemon content Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays every single week. Appreciate you all, and until next time, I'll see you then. Peace.